Right, I've just been asked if I've done a video on chisel sharpening and the answer is no. Because I'm sure there's there's a thousand videos out there showing showing sharpening chisels. This is my inch and a half chisel that I like. But the back has to be flat. The back has to be flat because if you if you're chiseling and it's not flat, the chisel starts drifting away like that. And also it's it's quite hard to get a very sharp edge on it. I don't have any fancy kit. I have a old grinder. I've always promised myself a fancy new fine stone grinder, but this one does what I need. And really you should run the chisel like that. But I put my finger behind so that you get your stop. But it hits this. And I've never bothered putting a you know another piece on the face so that I can just run it nicely. I go against all advice and just use the side like that. This one's not square. Don't know why. But what I'm gonna do is square this up and sharpen it. I do have one of these for sharpening. Never use it. Bought it when I first started and when I got it out, I was laughed at by the old man. They said, learn to do it by hand. So that's what I did. And my sharpening stone is, it's a DMT Duo, I think they call them. Used to have like a yellow tab on here. This is fine and super fine. You can see I don't really use the super fine. It's too fine, but the fine's nice. But they're not cheap, these are a hundred and some pound. The best one you can get would be fine and coarse. But like I say, they're hundred and odd quid and I can't afford to replace this, so the fine does me fine. Here. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do square this up and grind it. It's very simple. That's why I haven't made a video about it. But with this lockdown, I've got some time to kill. I've got a tub of water here to cool it down. You want to avoid getting blue in on it, so I think that can soften the metal. But I'm going to square it up first, then I'm going to grind it. Look at the little square here. So it's not far out. <laughs> That's a bit better, but now I've got a flat on the end. Keep it cool. And I'm just going to work on the side here like that. Nearly there.
that bit's where it was sharpened before that I need to remove. I just start to get a bit of blue in on there now because it's getting near the edge so that very thin edge gets hot very quickly so I've just got to be careful of that That'll do. Bit of a burr there. It takes a very long time to slow down this. But like you can see. Be right. Right, sharpening. I'm going to wash this a bit in the water outside. And like I was saying, you want the back to be as flat as possible, especially on that front edge there. I found it quite hard to get this one flat originally. See there's still a bit of a shallow there, and I haven't bothered sharpening up here. One of the worst things you can do is use it as a scraper. That makes it really hard sometimes to get a sharp edge on that edge, because you're rounding over that edge basically. I do it quite often, but I don't have a lot of choice, and when I do, I try not to get carried away. Uh, that burr is quite big at the moment. Your first stroke you want to go backwards. You want to be almost like rubbing that off. If you go forward you're rubbing it under here. It'll get in and you could even scratch your stone. So You see that sharp edge? Or that shiny edge, should I say? That's the burr gone. Oh, it's being rolled over onto the front. There it is, look. Right now, I'm going to flat this off. I might have to put a bit of effort into this because it's a bit old and cruddy. see I've still got a, a fraction of a burr on that front edge which is making a bit of a hollow behind it I need to keep I need to keep flattening it off until it's shiny all over
pretty much there. Do it a little bit more. It's very tempting to lift your chisel a little bit to try and grind that off, but like I say, it'll end up rounded then. And then when you chisel in, your chisel will drift. You want it to go straight, so that needs to be straight. This is why a coarse one would be better. If I had a coarse stone, I could flip it over and do this in seconds and then put it back on here to, you know, polish it up. I think I've got that there. I'm going to ignore all that. Right, so I've got this thing. Chisel goes in there. Sort of. The wheel on the bottom does that, but with that, that wheel can mark your stone if you're using like a traditional oil stone that's made of stone, it'll crush it and make a groove in it. So I'll keep your stone wet, two hands, and just try and keep the same bevel. It's a bit high for me, is this? That's my bevel. I want to be slightly up. So I'm just starting to get an edge on there. as far as I'm going to take that one for now because the next time I sharpen it you know I'll just sharpen it I won't grind it every time sharpen it sharpen it sharpen it that'll creep back but same again I've got a burr on the back of there that's normally a sign that you've you know you've sharpened it enough but same again back first then forward Sometimes you can pull that bevel off again. You see me? I was taught by the old men they would do that. But I've got a scar on my hand. There, look. So I do it on my trousers now instead. Stropping, I think they call it. See the old mango, but I just cut myself to ribbons. That's all. Right, that's pretty sharp. For my type of work, my, for my sight work, you don't want it super sharp because it just dulls almost instantly. But you don't want to grind it at too steep a bevel either and sharpen it because you can't get it sharp. Then a shallower angle will give you a very razor edge. Steeper angle will be like, I don't know, that's we use a cold chisel or something. Right, I'm not going to chop in a chisel, but this is why I prefer an inch and a half because it's the same size as a, a hinge. So when you're cutting in the ends, you get a nice straight line. And what I've shown quite often is if you're chiseling off, try and find the level that you're working at and then sort of guillotine off like that that's why a nice wide chisels were useful and you should keep your hands behind the chisel but it's 
not a good example but see if that wasn't flat you'd cut in and then it'd lift up I'll do me and finally when you put the chisel down, just like you would a plane, you don't put it down so the sharp edges on the surface, put it down upside down like that. You put it down like that, it gets knocked, rubbed, sit it down upside down like that.